Hilal food, a household name when it comes to sweet and confectioning since 1957. So it is our pleasure to have Group CEO of Hilal Food, Faisal Munche. Welcome to Jugnu Junction, Faisal. Assalamualaikum. Thank you so much, Hassan. Thank you for having me here today. It's an honor to uh, be here. Um, uh, obviously, I have a very long association with Retailer Span. Uh, so it's an honor for me to be here today and talk to you. Lovely. So, Faisal, while we continue our uh, gap up and discussion, it would be great if you can just uh, share your story. I know you inherited a very successful company and then later once you onboarded, you venture into multiple new lines. Mm -hmm. So can you just a little bit tell us about your own journey so far? Yeah, sure. Asim. So uh, formally, my name is uh, Faisal Munshi. I'm the CEO of Hilal Foods. Along with that, I'm the CEO of Domino's Pizza Pakistan and the managing director of Hilal Care, a company uh, I started in 2016. Uh, my journey in Hilal started in 2010, that's when I uh, graduated from the University of Toronto in Canada. I joined uh, the family business, uh, at that time it was uh, Hilal Confectionery, the formal name of the company. Uh, Uswak Domino's Pizza B uh, was part of our group companies and uh, at that time um, during my joining I, I spent uh, a short stint in uh, every uh, department uh, to understand uh, the workings of the departments. I honestly, coming straight out of college, did not have first-hand practical knowledge or experience about corporate environment. So uh, obviously with uh, great mentors like my grandfather and my father, I picked up things very quickly. So initially, uh, after doing the stint in every department and getting a feel of the whole company and the different functions, I decided to focus uh, in sales and marketing mm -hmm. under my uh, grandfather, uh, reporting directly to him. Uh, at that time, we had uh, uh, many family uh, members in the company. Uh, myself, my elder brother, Fahad Munshi, my father, Naim Munshi and my grandfather, uh, the late Ali Muhammad Munshi. Um, so the structure was such that my grandfather was the managing director, uh, my father was a CEO, my brother was the director of operations, and uh, I had become the director of sales and marketing. So uh, for almost uh, four years, I worked uh, very closely with my grandfather. He had a, a very unique style of management. Uh, I think uh, something that uh, I have not seen, you know, um, uh, in many uh, people. Uh, obviously, being a founder of the company, the kind of uh, first-hand knowledge he had about everything to do with marketing and sales within the company, and the kind of uh, consumer knowledge he had, uh, again, uh, coming from very humble backgrounds as well, he. Uh, was a self-made man. He did not uh, inherit any uh, company. Uh, in fact, uh, within his uh, family, uh, he was the only one who decided to start a business. All of his other brothers uh, joined the professional field. Uh, either they were bankers or lawyers or doctors. So uh, he never wanted to work uh, under someone. He always had an entrepreneurial mindset. Uh, he always wanted to start something on his own. So he came from a very simple uh, beginning. Uh, it was a small candy shop in uh, Hyderabad where he first started selling candy. And um, you know, he's uh, someone who I believe many people in Pakistan, you know, would consider to be a pioneer and a guru in the marketing environment uh, of Pakistan. Uh, his story started many, many years ago, but when he would often tell me about his early uh, times, he would always emphasize the, the importance of, of marketing. Mm -hmm. You know, his term was that whatever you consumer, whatever you retailer has to keep it. You know, so he was never the type of person who would uh, push products, uh, he would always uh, create a pull, mm. uh, right, by creating demand. So his uh, journey in marketing started probably back in 1960s 
when he uh, was running his candy store in Hyderabad. So to bring customers to the store, he he decided to uh, to put a radio mm. uh, in front of the store. Obviously, uh, 1960s, you can imagine the the low, you know, uh, penetration of radios in in the world and even Pakistan. So people would come to his store just because he had a radio. So there were songs and news. Bhi aati thi. Wow. So that's how he used to attract uh, customers to come to his store. And then obviously when people came, the, so they would buy things as well. So you know, that's a very you know, uh, early you know, story of how his, uh, his um, obsession with marketing started. You know, uh, simply from bringing customers into a store through a radio, you know. But the idea was, you know, the bigger idea has always been to be disruptive, mm. right? A radio at that time was very disruptive because uh, and not, not every shop had it. Mm. So from there, uh, he started um, uh, then making his own candies and uh, under his own brand. And then the company was and then uh, we started our first factory in Hyderabad back in 1975. And from there, uh, Alhamdulillah, God has been very kind, uh, business grew. Uh, obviously, uh, my grandfather along with my father worked tirelessly to, to grow the business, uh, to create brands. And uh, you know, the, the main thing which really helped Hilal take off was the uh, obsession with innovation and marketing. Kuch alag karna hai, kuch naya karna hai, kuch different karna hai. I remember he used to tell me stories about how people used to call him crazy. You know, you're crazy, you're making an ad for a Aathane, you know, Aathane mm. ki candy. Aur aap ye ad ishtiyah chala rahe hai, cinemas mein, TV pe. Kaun, you know, ek ad dek candy khareede ga. Candy, obviously, confectionery being a very impulse driven category but he really believed that uh, you know brand uh, uh, you know recall and brand equity is the main driving force behind getting any market share Absolutely. you know so at a very early age when everybody was uh, you know you could say against him and against his uh, philosophy of marketing a candy you know he he really stood true to his uh, business model and uh, from there you know the, the company really put marketing in the main you know uh, backbone of uh, the company's philosophy so alhamdulillah you know hilal is a, a company that has a very strong uh, and historic brands in pakistan if you talk about our brands in candy copra candy is pakistan's most uh, favorite candy. It's mm. uh, the largest consumed candy in Pakistan. So Hilal was the pioneer of Khopra candy, uh, Amras candy, another very strong brand within our uh, umbrella of brands uh, is also a very strong brand name within the candy category. Pir Mahase, you know, Churan Chutney, uh, one of my favorite uh, candies within our uh, basket of candies. Uh, then ventured out into new categories, um, started with uh, Bubblegum, uh, famous uh, Ding Dong, the brand. Mm. So that was uh, created by him. And then from there, Fresh Up and uh, jellies and package cakes. So everything that Hilal has always done has been A, to do something different, mm. you know, to, to create a new segment or a market. And obviously when they, when we, got into new segments, the, the, the core, you know, ideology has always been to, to, to do a lot of creative marketing to really, uh, you know, create strong brand equity. So um, while um, working under my grandfather for four years as director of sales and marketing, I learned a lot from him, both on selling strategies, distribution and obviously marketing. After the things, you know, evolved, uh, new uh, departments or new functions within sales came. For example, trade marketing uh, is a relatively new function in uh, sales. 
uh, did not exist at his time. But obviously, as retail becomes more organized, having a strong presence on the shelf becomes mm. even more important. We a concept that you know you can have all the fantastic uh, ATL campaigns, but if your presence in the store is not strong, all mm. that money can be wasted. It's that uh, idea that um, a buying decision is made within seconds at the store. So, sub ishtiyar dekte hai, lekin agar store mein presence strong nahi hoti hai, to you can have uh, a sales loss. Absolutely. So, uh, yeah, you know, did marketing and sales for many years. Then uh, in 2016, I decided to, you know, ek mere mein hamesha ek kira tha ki kuch apna karna hai. You know, I want to really experience the journey of um, starting something from scratch. Okay. Uh, you know, it's much uh, easier to come into an organization that's established, that has all the functions uh, there, you know, already uh, in existence. But to start something from scratch, you know, uh, obviously, A, developing the team, developing the brands, and uh, really understanding, you know, the, the pains of, uh, of a startup was something that, you know, I had never experienced. So in 2016, I decided to uh, get into uh, non-food FMCG. So we started uh, Hilal Care. Uh, it was a strategic decision by the group to um, get into uh, non-food for two reasons. A, obviously, uh, food is a category where volumes high high, but profitability remains uh, a challenge. Uh, Non-food is a little different. Uh, you know, it's um, a category that uh, generally has a higher profitability margins. And obviously there's a, a lot of room for innovation here as well. You know, when you're in the business of personal care, you're in the business of selling dreams. Mm. Uh, nobody needs uh, any personal care product uh, like people need food products. Absolutely. You know, food is uh, important. You have to eat uh, for various reasons. But personal care is something that, you know, you're okay without having those products. But to create the demand and to create the need and obviously to, to really encourage people to buy personal care products because of hygiene factors, mm -hmm. because of social factors, because of, you know, many other reasons. So that, you know, has always been um, something in my opinion, uh, it's always been a little bit of a a more difficult marketing area because ek to khane peene mein demand is always there mm. right whether you capture it or somebody else somebody is always going to be there buying your products but personal care has been a little challenging where we've seen that you really have to go you know into very creative innovative marketing strategies to create that demand uh, let's be honest, you know, if I don't or you don't use a body spray, you'll be okay. Uh, maybe your, you know, the perception of you might not be okay, but, you know, you won't uh, be hungry, you won't starve, Absolutely. You know, you'll be okay. So, um, when we got into uh, non-food FMCG, our flagship product was uh, body spray, so we launched uh, Bold which was Pakistan's uh, first uh, body spray brand. And the other thing which really excited me about uh, non-food was the concept of third-party manufacturing, which is very normal in non-food, but uh, not very common in uh, food. So this allowed us to create um, a, you know, a kind of um, you know, organization that was very lean. Mm. Uh, to date, Hilal Care has no manufacturing units. Everything we, we, we make is uh, outsourced to our co-packers mm. and we are in the business of uh, marketing and distribution, which I feel is the core. Right? So, Alhamdulillah, uh, this uh, company has now become a bigger company. Uh, it has uh, strong brands, uh, bold has also become a very dominant brand in the men's uh, personal care category. And uh, during this uh, last six years, we've launched other brands under Hilal Care. Scrub Shine is one other brand. 
uh, very happy to say that it's Pakistan's uh, number two uh, dish cleaning uh, scurrying brand after Scotch Bright. Wow. And uh, we've launched other brands uh, like Sienna, which is a household brand. We make uh, air fresheners, soaps, uh, hand washes. And uh, lately we've launched a women's uh, brand called uh, Elaine. Uh, Elaine is a French word uh, for, uh, it means uh, glowing light. Okay. So, um, you know, we've uh, done some good work in halal care. And you know, the thing which I feel most proud about is the fact that we started a company from scratch and now these are relevant brands in the industry. You know, um, they have a, a strong uh, equity, they have significant market share. So obviously, you know, uh, the, um, the satisfaction coming from that has always been more gratifying for me. But obviously the challenges uh, that have come during this journey have uh, taught me a lot, probably more than I would have learned had I not done this, had I just, you know, focused on halal foods mm. as, a, as a food FMCG company. And then uh, around the same time I started Hilal Care, uh, the opportunity came to, to lead Domino's Pizza Pakistan. Uh, prior to that, uh, we had a uh, few CEOs. Uh, they all did a fantastic job to, to really, um, you know, uh, create room for Domino's in Pakistan. But uh, the business was not growing to the, the level that it should have been. So we decided to, uh, you know, give uh, someone from the shareholders uh, a chance to really uh, focus on this business and uh, try to pick it up. So uh, I took on that challenge uh, as well. And uh, first thing, you know, this is so important and I can't emphasize this enough. Uh, the most important thing in any organization are the people. Right, uh, people are going to be the ones that turn the organization around Absolutely. and people are going to be the ones that really take it to the next level as well. Uh, so prior to uh, me taking over as CEO, Domino's uh, core functions, uh, finance, supply chain, uh, HR, admin, they were shared uh, resources uh, with Hilal Foods. So we segregated them. Um, we brought in new people to lead these functions. And I think that was, in my opinion, the, the most important step in turning around that company. Because when you brought people in and you made them focus on their functions within Domino's, mm. it really created an environment where there was so much focus on every area. So, uh, obviously, we got to the product. Uh, product at that time was uh, not consistent, to say the least. Uh, it had um, various uh, opportunities for improvement. So, uh, in the business of pizza, the most important ingredient is your flour. So, oh. you know, our flour specs were not uh, correct as per Domino's international standards are, uh, you know, various other uh, areas within the product um, uh, domain, like the sauce, the cheese, uh, all of those, uh, you know, had room for improvement. So we first, you know, really worked hard in fixing the product. Obviously in this, we involved Domino's International. We had uh, independent consultants helping us as well. And we really, you know, perfected the product, which I think is the core of any organization. Product market fit. Right. Uh, product, uh, you know, obviously I, I really value people. Uh, without people, I am nothing. But people have to sell a product. Absolutely. Right. So product will always come first and then the people. Right. Because if you give people uh, inferior product, you're going to make their life uh, much more difficult. Uske baad, the third thing, uh, service, you know, um, I always say that no matter what industry you're in, everybody is in the service industry. You know, you have a responsibility to service two customers. One is your internal customers and the other is your external customers. So right. 
But service starts first with your internal customers, which are your employees. You know, you have to create an environment where they can thrive. So we talk about culture, we talk about, you know, uh, ownership, we talk about, um, you know, making people accountable, uh, making them empowered. So all of this, you know, is really important if you want to drive people to achieve the organizational goals. You know, uh, there's a saying um, uh, from this book which I, uh, you know, often read and reread, uh, how to win friends and influence people. Mm. The best way to make someone do something is to convince them that they want to do it, not because you want them to do it. So right. Nobody wants to be told what to do. Right? But if you create a belief in them that this is the right thing to do and they truly believe it, they'll do wonders for you. So, uh, you know, we really worked on, on uh, creating the, the best culture in Domino's. Obviously, culture is something which is constantly evolving. Uh, it's still evolving to date, but we created a culture of teamwork. Uh, we created a culture of respect. Uh, we create a culture of, uh, you know, empowerment, and uh, we embedded all these things in our core values. And the last thing, you know, if I had to reflect back on what really helped Domino's Pakistan take uh, take off, is uh, technology. Uh, there's a saying in the world that uh, Domino's is a tech company that just happens to sell pizza yeah. as its product, and uh, it's actually a fact, you know, because. If you look at uh, the turnaround of Domino's back in the early 2010, 11, it was uh, technology. Um, they were the first ones to introduce uh, online ordering and give visibility of where your pizza is on the road. And uh, that was just one aspect of technology, but the entire Domino's store, you know, point of sale software which we call uh, Pulse, is all tech driven. So it helps us gather data, mm -hmm. which is uh, such crucial data to see how we are performing in our operational times, how fast we are making pizza, uh, how long is the pizza waiting uh, for the rider to come to deliver it to the customer. So, you know, gathering all this data and then using it to improve your bench plan, your hiring, your human resource planning, uh, your training, you know, at the end of the day, it all, every initiative you take to improve, it all comes from data. So Faisal, I think uh, you're very lucky to, you get a, a time to get a supervision directly from a founder, your grandfather, mm -hmm. at a very early stage of your career. Mm -hmm. And I think that really helps you to build your value system and your work ethics. Because the founder ke saath aap time spend karte hain, uski jo learnings hoti hain, jo pain process and the way he has built the overall the philosophy around the organization, mm -hmm. that really helped you out. I think where you are today. Yeah. Uh, so coming back to uh, where Hilal Group is today, it has a three dif very distinct uh, businesses, uh, which has nothing to do with each other. So being a group CEO. Uh, how you manage the complexity and how you prioritize okay, in Tino businesses ko, how you want to drive simultaneously yeah. because they are at a very different stages of uh, their life cycle. Uh, one business is pretty mature, well established, the other one is at a growth stage, the third one is maybe at a seed stage where you are investing and in everything behind. So being a group CEO, how you just manage all that and prioritizing the resources deploy manage I think that's a very good question, Asan. Uh, I'm still figuring out uh, how to manage it uh, better, but uh, obviously over the years I've become better at it myself. Uh, we're in two business uh, verticals. One is uh, FMCG and the other is uh, retail. Uh, yes, there are three companies. Uh, one is in personal and home care in FMCG. One is in foods, namely. Uh, baking and confectionery and uh, the other one is retail so yes there are many um, uh, you know you could say complexities um, in uh, in uh, retail which don't exist in you know FMCG but at the same time there are many complexities in FMCG 
that don't okay. exist in retail. So at the end of the day, look, uh, as in the 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 core of both businesses. Um, has to be focused around you know people development. Uh, you know, Alhamdulillah, Hilal Foods you know is a is a business like you said which is in a, a mature stage. But being in a mature stage uh, has its own challenges on Absolutely. you know how to you know uh, keep up the growth rate year on year. How to you know keep increasing the top line. Uh, one is obviously by increasing market share of existing products. The other is Bilkul. to increase your geographies, you know, to expand more within Pakistan and the world. And the third is to bring in uh, new products uh, in, through innovation, uh, through, you know, entering new categories. So Hilal Foods, you know, you could say is at that uh, place where now we're looking into how to expand further by, by focusing on these three areas, gaining market share increasing our geographies and third is uh, launching and new products. And according to you then deploy the resources and everything? Yes, of course, you know, I mean, um, when it comes to resource deployment, um, in my opinion, the most important thing is ROI. Uh, obviously, we hear it a lot. Uh, it's something we learn at a very early, you know, stage in our professional career. But in today's day and age, uh, ROI is so important because Absolutely. I mean, reality as in is that resources are scarce, right? Uh, they, they're not uh, limitless. So you have to, you know, utilize the resources where you get the best ROI. And doing all of that, you know, without uh, neglecting mm -hmm. any uh, business uh, is challenging. But, uh, you know, the way that uh, I'm able to run it in uh, the best way I possibly can is only because of one reason, and that's the people that I have Absolutely. under me. Uh, I cannot emphasize enough how important people are for any organization. Um, you know, uh, a couple of years ago, I read this book, uh, From Good to Great. Obviously, the book uh, is a very inspirational book uh, from every angle. Uh, but one, you know, core concept of that book, and it talks about the good companies in the world and why many companies did not uh, go from good to great. Why there are fewer great companies and many good companies. One core reason is uh, people. Hmm. Uh, great companies develop uh, talent. Good companies acquire talent. Hmm. Uh, I'm not saying that acquiring talent is uh, not correct, but you know, focusing more on talent development uh, should be the core of uh, the business. So coming to this point, uh, uh, while you're talking about uh, people and talking about team and deployment of resources, uh, I know for success of any, any, any great company like you just mentioned, uh, it's, it's about the team, people, or the culture of the organization, which is of paramount importance for, for the success. So being the being going through from the beginning and where you are right now, so what sort of a challenges you face uh, to build build up the culture, culture of performance, culture of accountability, mm. at the same time in a very distinct, you know, line of businesses. Mm. One is like you rightly said retail. The other side is FMCG. Within FMCG, it's food as well as mm. HPC side of the business. Uh, and having a very diverse background, people across three organizations. So, what was the challenges you faced, and how you addressed those challenges? Uh, that's a good question, Rasen. Uh, look, challenges uh, are there, and that's why we are there. Uh, if challenges are not there, we are very complacent. So, okay. you know, when you think you've seen it all, um, something new comes. Uh, like a pandemic, like COVID, uh, then you think you've seen it all and post-COVID uh, economic, uh, you know, pressures come like mm. inflation, supply chain challenges. So challenges are always there and, uh, you know, I welcome challenges. I think that challenges uh, are what teaches us. We grow mm. when we overcome challenges. Uh, challenges take us out of our comfort zone. So every you know business has its own challenges, um, but you know the best way to overcome you know any business challenge 
is uh, to have the right people sitting at Absolutely. the right seats. You know, I, I'm going to emphasize this a lot. Uh, the obsession with having, you know, a people-powered business. To to some level, you know, a CEO can do, you know, as much as he can, but without having, you know, a motivated uh, and a, a team that takes ownership in their work. Mm -hmm. And obviously ownership comes with uh, empowerment. You, know, you can't expect someone to have ownership if you haven't empowered him with the responsibilities, with data. So, you know, across our group, we're very transparent when it comes to uh, numbers because obviously we want uh, the, the teams to know uh, how the situation is right now and what they have to do to change it. So um, the core of you know um, how I'm able to run three different uh, businesses is because uh, I truly believe I have the best people uh, working under me uh, in all three businesses. That's lovely. And uh, they are the ones you know who are the frontline heroes. They are the ones who are facing all the challenges. They are the ones who are so you know self-driven that they come up with you know, so many solutions for all the problems. But to, to create that culture where they are, you know, uh, coming up with the solutions, that's uh, something that's an ongoing process. You know, culture mm -hmm. has to evolve, culture has to, you know, constantly be upgraded. You know, you have to constantly, you know, evaluate how your culture is in every life cycle of the organization, you know, a culture in a startup uh, might be a little different than a culture in an established company. But, you know, the core values of the culture remain the same. And, you know, when you have a, a culture that is people-centric, you really create an environment for them to thrive. And that's absolutely. what I do day in and day out. So, so while uh, absolutely uh, people and the culture really defines the success of the organization, uh, in the past, whenever I met you, uh, I've seen you, you, you're quite obsessed with the technology yeah. and, and empowering and, you know, unlocking stuff through technology. Yeah. Uh, so in this whole journey, how, how you find technology really helped you around and uh, how and what are the, you know, uh, pitfalls you experiences uh, are convincing your within the team organization, changing the processes around that one. So how you feel about this technology deployment and transformation within your organization? So yes, I said you're right. Uh, at a very young age, uh, you know, uh, I was always very obsessed with technology. Uh, at that time, it was more hardware, you know, the, the newest phones, the newest TVs. Uh, uh, but then uh, when you come into business, you know, you, you get uh, the experience of applications and softwares. Uh, tech has always been very, you know, uh, integral in uh, in Hilal Group. Um, back in the uh, late 90s, uh, my my grandfather had created a, a secondary sales uh, software, uh, much like uh, what you guys are sales doing flow. now in Salesflow. And this was in the early 90s, uh, oh. and he was not a, a tech guy, but he had a, a business problem. And uh, the only thing that could solve that business problem was technology. Uh, by making a, a software where he can track the performance of every single order booker in Pakistan. I still remember, uh, you know, my grandfather uh, being at that time 70 plus. Uh, he used to come to office. The first thing he did was turn his computer on and uh, log into this uh, uh, system application which uh, we used to call uh, HSS, uh, Hilal Secondary Sales. It was uh, an application that would show the, uh, the uh, achievements of every single order booker in uh, the company. So if the order booker had achieved his uh, target, it would show as a star. If he had overachieved the target, it would show as a crescent. You know, so, you know, uh, at that time, secondary sales, his software is available night But he saw the need and the importance of tracking secondary sales 
compared to that, it was all primary sales mm. uh, that organizations, you know, traditionally used to see. So, why I'm talking about this story is because this is the early 90s or the mid 90s, where tech was not uh, a very common, mm. you know, thing in any organization. And here we see, you know, my grandfather uh, automating uh, the visibility of uh, secondary sales and uh, you know that really stuck to me and um, after that you know we really made technology as a core enabler uh, to improve business processes and efficiencies across the organization i remember um, we had all the uh, you know uh, the best uh, erps uh, at that time we had oracle uh, but having the best erp but not getting visibility uh, in the form of information it is, useless. Is, is useless. Absolutely. So the concept of business intelligence, BI, uh, came to me in 2014-15. Mm -hmm. So we were the first company in Pakistan, in FMCG, that uh, implemented ClickView in okay. our uh, company. ClickView uh, was, uh, I think, one of the first, um, you know, comprehensive BIs that uh, could take data from multiple sources and aggregate okay. them into one platform. So we uh, implemented ClickView and that, you know, was a significant milestone in our group because, uh, you know, the visibility of the business improved so much and, uh, you know, uske baad then this obsession started that her cheese a bit dashboards may they can you know so Hilal has always been you know a company that has taken initiatives in tech we uh, were the first company in Pakistan to implement SAP S4 HANA on okay. the uh, Amazon cloud oh, okay. uh, so to date our uh, SAP S4 HANA is hosted on AWS um, we've always been the first company to experiment with any latest Technology. technology, I believe, we're the first ones to incorporate <laughs> sales flow in Hilal Care so as right. well. So, you know, uh, we, we take risks in tech, uh, they're calculated risks, but you have to take risks because... But I'm sure that risk has paid off very well oh. over the time period and because uh, end of the day you required such kind of information, actionable information inside so you can take quick decisions, yeah. informed decisions. Yeah. Having our data doesn't make a lot of sense, but uh, but absolutely you're right. So, Faisal, uh, 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 coming towards the end of uh, our our this uh, journey, I would just would like to understand and uh, what sort of advice you would like to give uh, to the founders or the people who are into business who have found a product market fit. So, what are the advice you can you want to give them? in terms of uh, uh, scaling their businesses because uh, the kind of diverse background, the kind of diverse experiences you have in multiple organizations, setting up as well as running. So what are the few advices you would like to offer? You know, uh, the first thing I would advise is to have patience. You know, I feel that uh, in today's uh, extremely fast-paced world, uh, people are not as patient as they were when we were growing up back in the early 90s, uh, you know, uh, even early 2000s. So patience uh, has to be there, you know, you're going to face many uh, hurdles, you'll face many challenges, uh, you have to be patient in overcoming them. Uh, when it comes to new startups, you know, you have to make mistakes, so mm -hmm. I always encourage you no know, mistakes. Uh, the idea is that you know mistakes. May jo sabse important aspect hota hai is the learning mm -hmm. that comes out of making that mistake. But if you don't make any mistakes, you don't learn. Uh, obviously, you do learn, but the learning you have from mistake is a learning that stays with you for life. Right. Right. Uh, any logical you know person would not make the same mistake twice and in fact you need to create a culture around that one so people take some bold calls and be ready for the failure yeah, yeah. 
because you rightly said the kind of experience and the kind of learnings you get out of that one yeah. that goes long way within the organization and for that particular individual as well yeah because you know i mean there isn't a right or wrong way to do anything uh, you have to make a decision that's so integral you know if you mm. are not quick in making a decision obviously you say pehle you need all the facts all mm. the figures all the research all the data but then you take a decision yes. and then after that you know you really have to work and make that decision right you know there's a famous saying that i don't take right or wrong decisions i make a decision sure. and i make it right so not every you know decision uh you make is right but that's where you know the the ego and arrogance also comes into play you should never have any ego in business because let's face it uh not every decision you make is a right one Hmm. but to have that uh, humility to understand ke maine galat decision liya hai and to really react and uh, you know uh, take a new decision uh, based on the learnings from the last one uh, that you know has to be continuously there because if you're going to be obsessed with that one decision hmm. you're going to really you know uh, go into a place where uh the arrogance and ego uh on this decision being right uh, might create a bigger problem in the organization so you know arrogance and ego nahi hona chahiye uh the other thing is that you know you need to constantly learn and unlearn uh unlearn being more important uh, in today's day and age than learning because things are changing so fast that what was the best way to do something 2 years ago might not be the best way to do it today so that concept of unlearning and uh, ensuring that you keep your you know learning curve continuously there uh, has to be in the forefront of any you know startup and uh, the last thing you know which i will continue to reiterate is you know making sure you create the best teams what i have done in my short career is i have made multiple teams multiple times mm. and i'll continue to make teams because people come people go and as you build new teams you obviously deal with different personalities different people so it's the idea of really you know having right people working together uh as a team uh all running towards the end goal at a very early age in any organization you have to kill uh any negativity any mm. you know um, so so around the team part uh, are you a strong believer to build people within the organization or are you prefer to bring someone have experience and bring them on on board them and then drive the overall capability part so you know it has to be a combination of both of them as in um people from outside uh, bring in fresh ideas mm. uh, new perspectives uh, it has to be a a healthy balance of both um that being said i still you know truly believe that developing your internal people and uh, focusing on their you know uh, positives as well as negatives and then making plans to overcome their negatives or their shortcomings is all part of the people development program mm-hmm. so there is a strong you know uh, culture within hilal of promotion from within okay it's something i learned from dominos uh, dominos being uh, a people driven you know uh, organization Uh, there are no machines there are no robots uh in dominos uh, everything we do is all made by hand mm. uh so when you have a business which depends 100% on people you have to create a environment where people are continuously growing okay. because as we expand our our branches as we expand our stores 
um, it's the existing people who take on new stores. We never hire a new team for a new store. Even if it uh, is a store in a new city, we, we hire uh, those people mm. um, and then we transfer them to our existing cities and we take the people from the existing cities and transfer them mm. to that new store. Okay. So if you want to scale up, uh, one important aspect is having the right uh, people who are developed to scale up the organization. So promotion from within is a very core you know, value in Hilal and uh, in order to ensure that that cycle is um, uh, a continuous cycle, you have to focus very highly on training and development. Because look, reality is that these are the best people who you have. Absolutely. Right? And You're they can understand your business core values, they understand processes, system, yeah. culture. So it's much easier to you know, keep promoting them and bringing up more senior roles so they can further groom people in the chain. Yeah, the whole cycle, you know, uh, works when when you have promotion from within. You know, um, we had a case uh, a year ago where, where somebody had left the organization. Mm. We could have hired somebody from, from outside, but we decided not to. Uh, we decided to promote from within. But that one promotion ultimately led to 15 other promotions because that was a, a key you know, uh, person heading a function. So when we replaced him with someone from within, his promotion led to many other promotions. And you can imagine the kind of motivation in the company Everyone is getting, yeah. when, when this kind of thing happens. So you have to you know, really focus on people development. And you know, a very good concept hai, which I've seen firsthand is taking people out of their comfort zone. You know, a finance guy, a finance professional, uh, you know, can either do finance his whole life or maybe he can uh, try some other function. Okay. I've seen uh, some good success with uh, taking people outside of their comfort zones and putting them in different new, way. challenging, different roles. Yeah. And sometimes they bring a very uh, interesting aspect because they are bringing the fresh ideas, fresh yeah. perspective to the overall equation. Yeah. Because a person who already worked, has yeah. a own mindset, he has set of examples on which he has built all of it. Exactly. And suddenly when someone comes from outside, they sometimes bring a very interesting and fresh idea that this is the other way to look towards the problem or the solution. Yeah. So you know, you have to have a, a fine balance between both. Uh, people from outside, external hirings have also brought in many posit positives. Uh, but you have to really focus on people development. And when you do that, the most important hiring, in my opinion, is the hiring at the entry level. If you have that philosophy that I want to promote from within, you have to be very, very particular in your entry level hiring. Mm. Because the idea is that that guy who has joined the organization at the entry level mm. will one day maybe head the department. So coming to the last uh, leg of our interview, uh, a very quick question I will ask around and it's a rapid fire round. Uh, so if you were, if you are not what you are currently doing, what field you would like to take? I would be a, a football manager. Okay, interesting. So that's your, related it's to your my, It's my passion, okay. it's my hobby, I love football. So just imagine if there is no halal and which company you would like to work in all over the world? All over the world? Yeah. Any company? If it's not halal, I think I choose a field that can make a difference in sustainability in today's day and age. So Tesla is one company which really attracts me. Okay, interesting. Any book you would like to recommend uh, that people will people should read? Yes, uh, a book I read recently called uh, "The Ride of a Lifetime." It's okay. a, a autobiography on uh, Robert uh, Iger, ah, the CEO of Walt Disney. Okay, interesting. So very good book, a uh, very good read. So one habit which you refuse to let go? Uh, my, the fact that I compromise on sleep. Oh, interesting. One 
skill set which you want to really learn uh, which you haven't experienced so far? Uh, I think I would really like to learn how to do software programming. Ah, that's interesting. Keeping in mind your question on my obsession with technology. Ah, so you want to be becoming like a from a starting from the developer to you know I think uh, tech and another function which becomes so important is law. Ah, interesting. That's interesting. Thank you very much, Fasan. Thank you so much, Essen. It was a pleasure meeting you. Thank you for having me. Like always. Thank you. Take care.